Hi guys, welcome to my channel and another watercolour sketchbook painting. I would normally do this video on a Friday but I'm going to be doing it on a Tuesday from now on as it fits better around other commitments and allows me a bit more time to work on Friday's video. So let's get started. I thought today I'd paint this cute little picture of a red squirrel which I found on Pixabay and printed off on my computer. And in the absence of any fancy video editing software, I'm going to leave it at the top left of the screen so you can see it during the video. I wanted to paint this squirrel across both pages of my sketchbook again today as I really liked how the flamingo painting turned out last time. And I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one if you want to go and check it out. I also had the idea to try out the dry brush technique today for an easy and realistic way to create the squirrel's fur. So make sure you watch to the end of the video to see how it turns out. First though, I'm going to make a rough outline sketch of the squirrel using a regular HB pencil. I also have to hand a plastic eraser, but all the items I use today will be listed in the description box. When I'm drawing in my sketchbook, I like to freehand the sketches, just because it's good practice for accuracy and proportion, and it doesn't matter too much if it's not 100% perfect. So I first draw out a really rough outline sketch on the paper so I know where I want it to be and what size I want it to be. Then I use my reference picture to get all the proportions right. I also use the negative space around the squirrel to help simplify the drawing and make sure my angles are alright. And when I'm happy with my outline sketch I use a kneaded eraser to lift off some of the graphite so that it doesn't show through on my final painting. Today I've also decided to use some washi tape just to get a nice crisp line under the branch the squirrel's sitting on. Now it's time to start with a painting. I like to spritz my paints before I begin with some clean water to reactivate them and I also start to think about what colours I'm going to use by looking at the reference photo. The first colour I thought of when I looked at this reference photo was burnt sienna. So I'm going to swatch out all of the colours I think I'm going to use on the left hand side of the page. I also picked out a mauve and thought that would be really good to mix in with that burnt sienna for the darker shadow areas under the squirrel's body. I also picked out some sepia as well as some Venetian red. For the area under the squirrel's belly I mixed in some yellow with my mauve to create a kind of a greeny brown colour as that was the colour I thought reflecting from the branch. Now it's time to start painting and for this I'm using a really fine number one Derwent water brush to apply a mix of sepia and indigo. This gives a really nice dark colour without being too flat. Now for the squirrel's head and body and I did mention using the dry brush technique for the fur texture but before I start on this I need to lay down a base layer. For this I'm going to be using the wet in wet technique and start off on the squirrel's head by pre-wetting the area with clean water before then dropping in some dilute burnt sienna. Whilst the paper is still wet I also start to drop in some sepia and some darker burnt sienna just to map out some more of the features of the squirrel's face and head. Then I go on and do the same for the rest of the squirrel's body. So I start off by laying down my clean water and dropping in a slightly more concentrated burnt sienna. I'm not worrying too much about fur length or direction at this stage, I'm just getting the base layers down. I also drop in a bit of mauve whilst the paper is still wet. Then working wet on dry I start to add in some of that mauve and cadmium yellow mix that I made for the area under the squirrel's belly. I soften out any harsh edges I don't want just using a clean damp brush. Now whilst the head and body are drying I can start to work on the squirrel's bushy tail and for this I use the wet on dry method again. I use really short flicky movements for this with my brush and try and get in some of the direction and shape of the fur. I use a mixture of sepia and mauve to begin with, fairly diluted to start and gradually build up to a more concentrated layer, increasing the values to start to build depth and give a good base for the dry brush technique I'm going to use later on. Now I'm going to work on the branch the squirrel is sitting on, and for this I'm using the wet in wet technique again. I pre-wet the branch with clean water and then just drop in some dark sepia. 
I allow this to just bleed across the wet area and really like the effect that it gives. So now with those main base layers down, it's time to start building in some of the detail. And I begin on the squirrel's head using a size 00, zero brush and start to look at the direction and length of the fur. I'm still using a little bit of water with my paint, but I am building up a little bit more detail. As the watercolour paint does tend to dry lighter, I also need to increase the contrast and add in some darker values with that small brush as well. I move on to a larger round brush and do the same kind of thing on larger areas of the squirrel's fur. So I'm just starting to put in some details of the direction and length of the squirrel's fur. Working in layers like this really helps to add depth and build up the texture of the fur to help make it look realistic without it being over complicated or time consuming. I start to use less and less water on my brush now, which gives me more control over the paint. So it's really important to use short light strokes that mimic the squirrel's fur. And I taper them at the end, so I use a very light flicking motion with my brush. Eventually I get to the point in this part of the painting where I'm using a really dry brush and that just means that when I pick up the paint, I literally soak up any excess water on a piece of kitchen towel. So I'm still using my round brush and using it very dry to get this nice fur texture as I want the precision that I can get with this round pointy brush. But the dry brush technique can be used really effectively with a flat brush too. Where you haven't got all that water on your brush you get gaps between the paint and that can be really effective to use in landscapes or seascapes, anywhere where you want texture really quickly and easily. The drier the brush, the more you can see individual bristle details on your painting. And it's because of the gaps in between the paint strokes that I did the base layers first, as I wanted them to be really good and solid and not see any of that white paper showing through. So now with most of the fur on the squirrel's body and tail done, I go in with the same round paintbrush and just apply that same dry brush technique to put in some more details on the squirrel's nose and mouth. I also start to fill in some of the colour on his feet. For this I go back to the wet on dry technique, so that's a wet paintbrush on dry paper and I'm using more of a concentrated burnt sienna for this. I also start to put in some of the darker shades of that foot coming on the other side of the branch. Now having built up the values and contrast on the squirrel, it's easy to see that the branch he's sitting on needs to be darker as well. So I use the same technique as I did before, using the wet on wet, wetting the branch first with clean water and then dropping in some darker sepia and indigo tones. I'm still allowing them to bleed together and create a really nice texture. I can then go in with a really fine detail brush and fill in the gaps between the squirrel's feet and put in a bit of texture on the branch as well. same detail brush I can then go in and start to add some finer details to the squirrel's face. So that's the shadow under his nose and a little bit of darkening around the squirrel's eye. This helps to really make it pop. I also add some darker sepia tones to the shadow parts of the inside of the ear and the outside of the ear facing us as well. After this had dried and I took a step back, I felt that I still needed to soup up the contrast a little bit, so added in some darker sepia tones to the front paw and also some of that darker area of the squirrel's tail. Being that the paper was dry, I didn't lose any of the nice texture or layers that I'd put underneath previously, so this just added a bit of contrast and a bit more life. I then went in and added a last layer to that branch to really make it stand out.
the only thing left to do then was to add in some fine details on the squirrel's face, so I added in some whiskers using a black Copic multiliner. And with that this painting was complete, so the last thing that's left to do is a bit of peel appeal and remove that tape. So I'm really pleased with how it turned out and I did have a lot of fun with this one too. If you haven't used the dry brush technique before then I would highly recommend you give it a go as it's a really quick and easy way to create texture and add a different dimension to your watercolour paintings. Let me know in the comments if you have tried it and what you use it for and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video please give it a huge thumbs up and if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing too. Take care, have a great week and look after yourselves. Bye!